Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I'm your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a quick and easy grunge punk uh, band poster kind of effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2018. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that's the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that's the option key. So with all of that, out of the way, let's get started by hitting Control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. And let's name this as band poster. Now the width is 3,840 pixels, height of 2,160 pixels, resolution 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, uh, white is our background, it doesn't matter, we're going to get rid of that. Uh, color profile is sRGB, pixel aspect ratio is square pixels, hit create, we're ready to begin. Now in the description below, I have a link to all the assets that I'm using for this tutorial. Uh, one of them being this picture that I'm going to bring in right now, which will be our basic background for the uh, poster. Now you can use any picture that you happen to want to use. Uh, anything works fine as long as you think it will look good with these effects on them. Okay, so get them centered uh, and then set it up like so. So here we have our picture and now we can really get started. So first thing we're going to rename this as photo just so that we know what we're working with and then you want to right click on there and you want to convert it to a smart object like so. Once it's a smart object you'll see the little icon down here that lets you know it's a smart object. Okay, and the reason that we're doing that is we're going to apply a uh, camera raw filter to this image, but you may need to change that filter later on. And I'll explain why in just a little bit. But let's first put on that filter. So go up to filter, go up to uh, camera raw filter, click on that, and then the camera raw filter uh, dialog box will open up. And the thing that you're looking to do here is you really want to bump up that contrast and, uh, and exposure. You really want things to be uh, well defined in this because the next thing that we're going to be doing is putting on a threshold uh, layer adjustment effect. And once you do that, anything that's dark turns black and anything that's light turns white. There is only black and white. There is no shades of gray and no other colors once you put in a threshold. Okay, so that's why we want to bring out all the detail that we can in the image so that we have what we want once we put on that threshold. So let us let me show you how that's done. Now I've done uh, a little mock trial of this uh, already, so I know what I'm going to use here. Uh, so let's just go here for 75. Uh, whoop, that was wrong. Let's go to 0.75 like so. Contrast here, we're going to bring that all the way up. Highlights, we're going to bring all the way down. Our shadows here we're going to leave at, uh, at ooh, let's make it 20. Uh, our whites here we're going to leave at zero. Blacks are going to be at negative 60. Okay and you can see that we're getting a whole lot of detail here and, and the colors look a little you know unreal uh, but that's fine because like I said we're going to be doing threshold. Okay and the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up the clarity here. Now normally I would not touch the clarity when I'm working on a photo. Uh, because it's easier and better to do that in Photoshop itself, not in the camera raw filter. But for this instance, we just want to really bump up the clarity all the way up to 100, which will give us really defined lines. See, if I bring it down again, you can see that things get a little blurry, a little less defined. And if I bring it all the way up, you get a lot of definition here uh, in the containers, which is what we really want here. Okay, that's really all we need to do here. Now you can play around with this as much as you want for whatever photo or photos that you're using. But for our purposes here with this image, this is what we're looking for. Something that looks really well defined and has a lot of good contrast in it. Okay, then we're going to hit OK, and there is our image. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, as I said, is we're going to add in a threshold adjustment layer. So we're going to go down here to our adjustment layers, and we're going to go to uh, threshold, which is right here. Okay, click on that, and you can see everything turns black and white. There's no shades of gray, nothing, just black and white. So um, 
It starts you off uh, wherever it wants to, which is usually at 128. And you can see you got some good looks here. Uh, um, up here, you've got a good definition and all this. Uh, I would like to make it a little bit less because I feel like the person jumping is missing a little bit of white to uh, give him some more definition. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit, um, like about here-ish. Let's, let's make it 100. Okay, and you can see he's got a little bit more definition over here in his leg, and his face has a little bit more definition. So that's what I'm looking for. And the rest of it looks pretty grungy and cool to me, so I'm going to go, that's okay. So the threshold is what really gives us the, the grungy kind of look, because now it looks like it's been badly photocopied or, or something along those lines. So that gives us that. Now what we want to do is we want to add in some color to our blacks and give our sky a little bit of color. So what we're going to do is we're going to let, uh, put in a color fill adjustment layer. So we're going to go down to our adjustment layers here and we're going to go up here to solid color. Um, and we're going to click on that. And that's going to give us this color picker that we can choose. It's going to give us a color fill uh, layer right here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose a cool color. Now, the color that I'm using, you don't have to use. You feel free to use any color that you want. But the color that I'm using is going to be 003C50. Okay, this kind of uh, steely grayish blue. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do so that we can see our picture is we're going to change our layer mode. Okay, and we're going to change our layer mode to difference. And the reason that we're doing difference is because we also want to affect the sky. Okay, we want to give not just the blacks color, not just the whites color, but both at the same time. That's why we're going with difference there. So that's all that we need to do with that. The next thing that we're going to do is put a gradient adjustment fill above this. Okay, so we're going to go back here to our layer adjustments. We're going to go to a gradient adju uh, adjustment. Okay, and what we're going to do is we are going to go here, um, click on the little arrow for the gradient. And if you don't see these particular gradients, what you want to do is you want to go over here, click on the little sprocket, go down to um, Color Harmonies 1. Click on that, hit OK, and then you'll see these gradients. And the one that we're looking for, at least for this tutorial, is the red, violet, yellow, green one right there. Okay, now you can feel free to experiment and try all the different ones. You can make up your own. That's all good. Uh, the style that we're doing is linear. Angle is going to be 90. Scale 100. Align with layers. The only one checked. Reverse and dither unchecked. Okay, you're going to hit OK. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to change our layer mode for this so that we can see our background. But we're not going to use difference this time. We're going to use subtract. And that will give us this cool rainbowy kind of background. It changes the color of everything. See if I turn it off, see how we've got this kind of uh, the steely gray down here for our blacks and everything else has turned this kind of peachy-ish color. And if we click over here, we get this really cool kind of rainbow effect and all the colors are, are a little messed up and cool looking as if it were kind of punk and, and crazy. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is change our foreground color and put in some text. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the text for this. And the first text that I'm going to do is going to be text that says tutorials. And uh, looking at this, I could do pixel magic up here. But uh, since I've got this guy who's jumping, I'm going to put tutorials down underneath him. So it looks like he's jumping over tutorials. Okay, so we're going to go to our text tool, T on the keyboard. Okay. Uh, or the text tool right here. We're going to change our foreground color to uh, kind of go with the look of our uh, image. Now you could just go over here and click there and pick up the same steel blue that we were using before, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick kind of a green color, and that's because we're going from steel blue to this kind of greenish color up here, and I, I'm going to put it down over here, so I want it to have kind of a green look, so it doesn't really match, but your eye is kind of fooled into thinking that it's supposed to match, okay, which kind of, to me, gives it the feel of being kind of handmade, punk, grunge kind of poster on, on the post no bills wall. Okay, so uh, the color that I'm going to use is going to be uh, 003100. Okay, this deep dark kind of greeny color. We're going to hit OK, and that's now going to be our text color. We're going to make sure that we are centered here, and the, uh, the text uh, that we're going to be using is going to be um, this guy, Baron 
Kuffner. Now, once again, I've got links in the description below to the fonts that I'm using, but feel free to use any font that you want. Okay, and the font size that I'm going to use is going to be, ooh, let's just make it 75. 75 points. Enter. Um, yeah, so that's good. And then we're going to go over here to character because this particular font, uh, you need to have your uh, kerning or the spacing in between letters, letters to be fairly far apart. So I'm going to start at 50. All right, and then I'm going to click where I want the text to come in. And I'm going to put in tutorials like so. Okay, and then I can use my move tool, which is V on the keyboard, and then move this around a little bit. Let's set it down right over here like that. That looks pretty good. Looks like he's hurdling the tutorials. That looks pretty good. And the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to change my foreground color again to a nice color to go up here. Uh, and that color is going to be uh, 680909. Okay, this nice red color. Okay, we're going to do that. Then we're going to go back to our text tool. We're going to change our text to this rubber stamp. Oh, sorry. Uh, we're going to create a new layer and then change our uh, text to rubber stamp like so. And then we're going to uh, change our VA here to zero. We're going to change our color to our red color that we just chose. And then we're going to type in our text up here, which will be um, pixel magic like so. Now, the uh, size of this is wrong, so let's change our size. We've got to make it a lot bigger than that. Uh, let's make it 160. All right. There we go. That looks a lot better. Uh, move tool. That's V on the keyboard. And then we're going to move it right about here-ish, right in the middle there. Okay, then we're going to give it a little bit of a layer style so it stands out a little bit better and looks as if it were part of a punk background. So we're going to go down here to our layer styles. And the first one that we're going to do is we're going to give it a stroke. Okay, and I'm going to leave this down here so that you can see the overall effect. So the stroke that we're going to do is a size of 1, position of center, blend mode of normal, opacity of 35%, overprint is unchecked, fill type is color, and the color that we're using is going to be this kind of deep bluish green, 00241C. Okay, and then what we're going to do is two drop shadows, one and two. So the top one, and then you can hit plus to make a second one. So the top one here is going to be uh, overlay blend mode. Our color is going to be this nice yellow, which is FFE04C. Uh, then the opacity is going to be 100. Angle is negative 45. Distance is 20. Spread and size are both zero. Contour is linear. Anti-alias is unchecked. And noise is 65%. The next drop shadow that we're using is going to be also overlay. The color that we're using is this pink, which is E, D, 3, 4, D, 5. And uh, the opacity is only 50%. Angle is going to be 135. Use global light, of course, is unchecked. Forgot to mention that before. Distance is going to be 30. Spread and size are both zero. Contour is linear. Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is 100%. Layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. We are then done with everything and we have our cool looking poster for a band or some kind of grunge looking thing. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.